Good evening, I'm Pastor Vance Mortensen, coming to you with evening prayer, courtesy of the Racket Lake Chapel in Racket Lake, New York. Tonight I'll be using some traditional prayers from the Celtic Daily Prayer Book for evening prayer, and we'll have some thoughts and reflections on a couple of scriptural sections uh, relating to the gospel reading for today from the Revised Common Lectionary. And I'm very happy to have you with me. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord, hear my prayer. With my whole heart I want to praise you, O Lord, hear my prayer. If you, Lord, should mark iniquity, who could stand? And who could stand? I will wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word do I hope. And now our expression of faith. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day, and though I am poor today, I believe. Lord, you have always given strength for the coming day, and though I am weak, today I believe. Lord, you have always kept me safe in trials, and now, tried as I am today, I believe. Lord, you have always marked the road for the coming day, and though it may be hidden, today I believe. Lord, you have always lightened this darkness of mine, and though the night is here, today I believe. Lord, you have always spoken when time was ripe, and though you be silent now, today I believe. The first piece of scripture that I would like to read tonight is from the book of Exodus, chapter 22. It's verse 6, if you uh, would like to look that up later. Chapter 22 of Exodus has a a series of damages and reparations that have been identified and documented in the book of Exodus. Considering when that time was written, a lot of these have to do with agriculture and crops and uh, property and boundaries. And and, uh, the uh, brief one I want to read tonight uh, has stimulated some uh, fairly insightful thoughts, I think, Uh, by a very famous preacher of a couple of hundred years ago. Exodus 22, verse 6. When fire breaks out and catches in thorns, so that the stacked grain or the standing grain or the field is consumed, the one who started the fire shall make full restitution. Again, Exodus 22, 6. The noted English particular Baptist preacher, Charles Spurgeon, who lived in the 1800s, approached this passage from a very unique perspective. What if the fire, in its many forms, was actually sin and words uttered and propagated by humans? Things like theft, slander, and so forth. What if those were the fires? If we acknowledge that rumor, misinformation, deceit, lies, start fires, we have an interesting way to look at today's gospel from the gospel of Mark chapter seven. In this gospel, Jesus chastises the Pharisees and the scribes who are uh, around him They were critical of Jesus and his followers for not following ritual purity uh, uh, laws regarding the food that they eat. Jesus quotes Isaiah to point out the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. And then he says something rather remarkable. Then Jesus called the crowd again and he said to them, listen to me, all of you and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile from, for it is from within, from the human heart that evil intentions come. 
we could sum this up pretty quickly. Where does evil come from? We have met the enemy and it is us. We're the enemy. What comes out of us? Lying, stealing, taking advantage of the defenseless in our personal and evil intent is not some external Satan demon that we would like to point responsibility to. Those things that are evil in this world come out of our own capability, our own propensity to be evil, to speak evil, and to try to deceive others. Certainly people who spread rumors and, and false misinformation are culpable. But who is it that started those things? They bear a tremendous responsibility. And in this passage, Jesus says that instead of following human doctrines and going along with what seems to fit our, our, our perceived needs, if you will, at that time, the things that are human-based and human value, if they are not in line with the word of God and what God would want for us, we should leave those things alone. But we should also be aware that uh, of what we are capable of. As Christians, we're accountable for our own behavior, just like in the Mosaic Law. When the Pharisees questioned Jesus about not following uh, ritual purity laws, uh, they, they had an honest question. I think one way that we could look at the Gospels is this. We, of course, have read those books, and we have seen the movie, so to speak. We know how it comes out. But the people that were around Jesus in this particular story, event from chapter uh, 7 in Mark, the Pharisees and scribes, they did not know who Jesus was. Even his disciples at this point in Jesus's life probably did not fully understand who Jesus was. The Gospels are a gospel revelation, and it is through, as we know now, it is through the birth, the teaching, the death and the resurrection of the Christ, we come to understand what God has done for us. Amen. Let's continue with our evening prayer. In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the refuge of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In the shadow of your wings, I will sing your praises, O Lord. And now let us join in a time of community prayer. Gracious God, we ask prayers for all those who are being battered by these extreme climate events going on around the world. Give comfort, strength, and hope to them. Lord, we have prayers for the people of Afghanistan and Haiti. Lord, give strength and wisdom to all leaders of the nations of this world that they may make just, true, and right decisions. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering during this pandemic. Pray for those souls who have died. We pray that we may come together as a people, a nation of humanity in this world, to defeat this pandemic. Lord, we pray for our own families and uh, protection as they travel about. We pray especially for all students who are beginning school in this country amid uh, dissension and uncertain times. Special prayers I ask for Wanda and Henry.
And now would you join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our, debtor, our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom now and forever. Amen. In closing, my friends, see that we are at peace among ourselves and that we love one another. Let us follow the example of good people of old. God will comfort us and help us, both in this world and in the world to come. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may it be so. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Good night.